There we go. Okay, so we've missed a couple of things for this recording, like our land acknowledgement. We did acknowledge our land mm -hmm. and um, First Nations here, the Lekwungen speaking people, Sankeys and Esquimalt. So, um, okay, so Ellie, would you like to do the honors on the first page? I'm going to share my screen again and we're going to introduce Ellie's work on her page. So at the bottom of that page, if you want to, you can follow along here on the screen, or if you have trouble with that, you can always open up the screen yourself. So this is the exhibition, which you can access on the artist page at the very bottom. You can come back and click to enter the exhibition here on this big button, which is now live. Um, first we have, when we get into the exhibition, um, a list of works and feel free to scroll through if you want to um, do your own thing, but we will go through each of these individually. So first we're going to go through um, Where Skies Meet, which is a photographic installation. Um, and these are images of sunsets printed onto chiffon and we're going to watch, we're, are we going to watch yeah. the video, right? Yeah. So we're going to watch the um, video and that's going to go into it quite a bit. And um, I will leave it um, to that. So I'm not repeating myself too much. Guys, me. Okay. We'll go back to the beginning. And, and, and then we'll go through yep. the rest of the artworks. There's seven more um, still artworks. Up. <laughs> okay, so hold on. Now, uh, let us know in the chat if you're not able to hear the audio, because we did test this before and it does play the audio and you should be able to yeah. hear it. I'll be checking the chat, so. And thanks to Nick Salvador, one of our members who yes. did the uh, the wrapping for this video. Yeah. My name is Ellie Heiza, and I am a multidisciplinary artist. I work in the mediums of drawing, photography, textile, and installation. Behind me is the artwork called Where Skies Meet. It is a series of photographs of sunsets printed onto chiffon and mounted within hanging wooden frames. These frames decrease in size towards the wall, creating a vanishing point. I'm interested in exploring human relationships with spaces, how they can shape us, how we perceive and interact with them. Where Skies Meet has different photos of sunsets that exist on their own as an image, but can also suggest a space with depth when viewed at a certain vantage point. Often in my practice, I am searching for a center of both the body and space. Much like this artwork, a person can experience this feeling of coming together from a certain perspective, despite the many different facets they may have. I wanted to make an interactive artwork that allows for viewers to achieve this center on their own. I've been learning about emotional responses and learned that serotonin and dopamine are released when that feeling of satisfaction is elicited from viewing satisfactory things, such as elements visually lining up and being centered in an aesthetically pleasing way. This positive and relaxing sensation is called Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, or ASMR for short. According to a study conducted at Swansea University, many ASMR enthusiasts will watch videos that elicit an ASMR response in order to soothe anxieties, de-stress, and even get a better night's sleep. This is a sensation I try to inspire by displaying unity at a particular vantage point. On top of that, I also want to give that control of obtaining emotional wellness back to the viewer by making it interactive. They can experience the artwork in a way that is beneficial to them and suits their individual needs. I am presenting all these layers as facets that can be a unified whole depending on how the viewer chooses to look at it. I chose the sunset as a subject because it is fleeting and changeable, much like our constantly changing bodies and perceptions. I photographed different sunsets because I wanted to compare these human qualities to something that we as humans often appreciate in nature. While it is changeable and transient, each facet or layer is integral to the overall structure. 
I also want this artwork to generate dialogue about the power of perception. I am interested in how our perception of something can change based on the distance and position from it. Due to the ephemeral nature of the medium, the images are only visible from certain points. This encourages the idea of engaging through movement and gaining that shift in perspective in order to get a new outlook on a space. The frames loosely reference windows, as a nod to the idea of another space. I constructed the frames for the purpose of displaying the chiffon fabric. Hiding the edges of the textiles by tucking them into the frames give the viewer an impression of a mysterious changeable space Oops, sorry. that is simultaneously present as well as elsewhere. This was done with the intention of representing the interdependency of the potential spaces that exist within and around us, a sort of membrane between the physical world and the imaginative, spaces that are both psychological and physical. Through my art, I invite viewers to reflect on their own unique relationships with their physicality and perceptions of the various environments they are exposed to. I believe this exploration is of more importance now than ever, as our everyday surroundings and sense of self-understanding has shifted in truly profound ways over the past year. The show runs for the duration of Culture Days from September 24th to October 24th. You can attend a virtual gallery opening on September 25th from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can attend an artist talk on October 24th from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. You can register for both of these events via the Exchanges Gallery website, exchangesgallery.org. Here we go. There's the dog. We have to show. Oh, the dog. we have to show the dog. <laughs> this is her famous moment. <laughs> There's the Instagram accounts that you can follow here. Um, and you can be friends on Instagram. And there's the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, feel free to um, add exchanges and uh, myself on Instagram and um, send a message, say hi. If you're, if we're not already friends, <laughs> yeah. So there we. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, um, does anyone, before we go any further, can we? Yeah, have for sure. Questions? Absolutely, if people does want to ask questions. Do you have any questions that came from that video or thoughts? Did you find your experience um, working with these hanging ones a bit different from working with um, these types of traces where it was like mounted to the plinth? Yeah, yeah, um, it was very different. I, I wanted to speak a bit more to that that ephemeral um, feeling that I was trying to get. And I thought the hanging one kind of did that. It was a lot more, it was challenging because the other one was a monument. So it was this very um, solid structure. And it was it had a very supportive base. And um, you know, from, from when we worked together on it, um, mm -hmm. that it was speaking a bit more about uh, monuments and memories. Um, but for this one, I didn't really have that, that connection to, like I didn't want to reference a monument. Um, I wanted to reference um, something that spoke to another space. So the, the window was something I wanted to reference. Um, and I wanted it to be like minimal so it wasn't distracting. It didn't have unnecessary decorative elements. So um, it was challenging for sure. And uh, a lot of, it was fun as well. Yeah. How did you come up with the idea of printing on chiffon? Oh, gosh. I, I'm trying to remember. I wanted to print on something that was see-through because mm -hmm. I wanted to do this um, this uh, depth of space. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play with that um, collapsing and creating space. Um, so like when you look at these works through the center and it, it's a lot easier in person than it is in the video, but you can see that the frames get smaller and smaller and it mm -hmm. kind of creates this sort of this vanishing point. Um, so... The chiffon, um, I really, I just got a sample, I got sample packs from a few different um, printing companies that print onto fabric. 
Um, and I ended up just testing different, um, different things. And the chiffon was the one that was kind of, it, it was so light and thin. It stayed see-through and it also moved because mm -hmm. I wanted it to be able to move. I saw that in the yeah. video. You had the window open yeah. and the air is yeah. just kind of moving. <laughs> yeah. Or even if you just walk around it, if you look behind you, it's moving based on your your movement, which I like. I want that interactivity. So interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. you actually can impact the work itself. Yes, while definitely. At yeah. It. <laughs> I think this shot really captures that a lot too. Yes, yeah, like you can depth. see right through. Yeah. You can see outside as well to the right. Yeah, and sometimes the image even disappears based on where you're. Um, and Ter saw this because he actually helped me install this. Sometimes the image is just not there uh, when you're walking past it, and then all of a sudden it's there, like because it's so um, thin the fabric. I, I guess that's why. <laughs> yeah. Got more Hi. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> Come in. We have some more guests here. My and daughter and my goddaughter. <laughs> and this part here, um, where you've got the slider, yeah. um, we wanted to make it because you know people can't see this in person. If you move that slider around, you can change your perspective. Oh, cool. just we wanted to give that interactivity to the viewer. Yeah. You've got the window open from the link. You can try it yourself too. It's it's kind of a lot of fun actually just doing this. <laughs> and you can use the little arrow on that as well. I think. Someone, or is that us? I don't know. I I just yeah I love this work. It's really great. And you can take some time to read some of the text. Yeah. So. Heidi um, put a lot of thought into this layout and we were talking about how some people love reading text and other people don't <laughs> and um, so we've kind of got both going on here um, so so the viewer can decide how they want to interact with it and experience it so feel free to read it or if you're like me I like to look at the images and then read it after <laughs> um, some people like to read it first so whatever you prefer and we guess we can leave that to them. Yep. And then when you get to the bottom of the page, actually, you can click on the next page. So there's nine, there's nine works all together. And then you can just go to the next one. And my bandwidth is a little bit slow, so it'll take a minute to load. Hopefully not too long. Could be because you have two laptops. Here we go. I think that there's also an element of humor in your work. Would you agree with that, Ellie? <laughs> yeah, and I think that's slowly coming out more. I think that, I don't know why, but before just self-doubt or whatever, yeah. I was scared to be humorous. But I, you know, I was always doing this really dark kind of works. And um, I, the humor has been coming out more lately, which I'm happy about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so lower my screen down a bit more so you can yeah, see it's the whole there. thing yeah so this one um what can I say about it I don't want to say too much about each work but a little bit maybe um so this is photography um I do a lot of mixed media work but this is just photography and photoshop um so digital work and um because this exhibition is a bit about mental wellness and I'm not a psychologist so I just want to say that as a you know, say that up front, I'm, I'm an artist, not a psychologist, but just speaking to um, some of my own experiences with uh, mental health and, and uh, friends and family, um, adding that humor uh, for me is really important. It was a really good way of healing. Um, so like this one with a chance of skies falling in, it's uh, the, there, there's another artwork called expected cloud cover. And then this one's with a chance of skies falling in. And it's kind of like, you know, you get to this point where you kind of have to create a distance um, between, or I have to create a distance between me and, and whatever anxious thing I'm feeling. I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. There comes the panic. Like, you know, so um, that's kind of what this work is speaking to. And it's like, you know, you get to a point where you're kind of like, I got to find repose within this and uh, find a way of dealing and healing with it. So this artwork is, it's not suggesting or telling the viewer what to do or anything. It's just kind of saying, 
here's what it is. Yeah, there's a chance that this guy might fall in, but you can just <laughs> lay back and <laughs> do what you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there any questions about this work? Comments? Move on. Hey. I definitely like the humor behind the mental wellness aspect of it. I think that's nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And this one. Yeah. Mind float. Mind float. So some of these works have um their photography, but they're also um, I guess, yeah. Would you say digital art, Photoshop art? Well, kind of something like digital that. composite. Digital composite, yeah. Um, because I take um, x rays that I've had over the past few years. And this is actually an x ray of my mind. I think the doctor was telling me something really important. I can't remember what it was. And I was, Whoa. it ended up being fine. But I was like, can I have the x ray? <laughs> it's so cool. I need to use it for my art. Um, so I kind of wanted to bring in the body and reference the body without it being such a literal thing. Um, so I, yeah, like I wanted to sort of, I guess, bring about a conversation about like, we're, we're, we're interconnected and we're part of the environment, we're part of the world. So there's, there's ways of representing the human and relating it to like a cloud or something mm -hmm. like that um, in this sort of abstract way. So that's what this work is doing. Awesome. I think it's great too when artists work with their own body materials like that. Yeah. Because I have a, I have so many eye scans and stuff course. too that I want to use for some yeah. work and and it is it is fascinating. Yeah. And the way you've transformed it in this manner. Well, thank fabulous. you. Thank you. Yeah, it's very. I really did think that was a cloud. I didn't realize it was <laughs> X-ray. Yeah, it's I'm the brain. The print is you can see it when it's printed because it's quite it's quite big and then you can kind of see there's like a few like veiny kind of looking bits mm -hmm. so you can see like it's kind of an the extra something the, the yeah. Here, right? yeah yeah so it's so like sci-fi looking like as if you're on some <laughs> planet and there's this moon brain waves in the sky yeah yeah thank you let's go to page four You know, this is very oh, yeah. different from the other works. Yeah. yeah, it's there is another work that's like it. We just have yet to uh, see yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, was that a little staircase going in? That was my question. That's, that's actually a fern. Center. Is that a? I don't know if you fern. can. Can you zoom in? Is that possible? Um, I can go one, two, a little bit. Yeah, so it's the same image that's kind of wrapping around the fingers there. Yeah. So it's plant life. Um, yeah, so gosh, there's so much. There's so many different inspirations behind this work. It's hard to say where to start exactly. Um, one thing I do want to bring up is um, something that um, you'll see consistently throughout these pieces is there's often a, a circle in the middle and um, I talked about that in the video a bit where I'm trying to find a center and this sort of calming point for the viewer. So I, I want to center things in this way that provides relief because, you know, there's all these different psychological associations with where you place something on a canvas. Um, and I can see Heidi's doing the I'm trying the to do gesture. the gesture. I'm yeah. trying to do the gesture. <laughs> So I can talk about that if you want. Yeah, is there a specific meaning to the gesture? What is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's got different meanings in different cultures, um, but the two most popular known ones are um, Buddhism and Christianity. Mm -hmm. And with Buddhism, it's a mudra, it's a, it's a rooting uh, mudra, and it's um, an exercise that you do to calm and feel rooted. Um, and one thing that I was taught when I was... Um, having some panicking issues and stuff and I was I was taking therapy for that was to do grounding exercises um so so this is a very literal exercise um 
And it was, it, it's also from the Christians, they believe got it from uh, ancient Greek and Roman speakers. They often used very significant hand gestures before they had something important to say. Hmm. And with Christianity, it's simply a blessing to the viewer. So oh. it's this, it's just a positive um, uh, sign. And I, I wanted to do the the roots coming out of the hands because you know it's like you're trying to root yourself you're trying to ground yourself mm -hmm. and what i was taught um and of course this is individual to every person and there there are some people that have um trauma related to nature so i wouldn't i'm not trying to uh, recommend this to anyone but what i was recommended for myself was to go out into nature to tell my body that i was safe um and to touch nature and that would actually root me so i, I wouldn't have this horrible um floating panic sensation um so it's like this literal rooting so that's all those different facets were coming in to to make this work yeah <laughs> it is very iconic using that circle with the image in the front like that mm -hmm. you don't know if the screens are down to Normal again. Yeah. Well, um, by the way, I meant to mention as well that on every one of these pages, you can actually make a comment to the work if you like. Yeah. You can leave a reply. Please, please do. Yeah. yeah. And um, they are uh, moderated, so we will receive them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that anybody's going to put something <laughs> silly up there, yeah. but uh, yeah, you're welcome to make a comment on yeah. every page if you like. Yeah. And feel free to reach out to me if you're if you're not comfortable saying anything during this talk. That's totally fine. Feel free to send me a message on Instagram. I'm I'm friendly. So <laughs> yeah. And she is going to be doing um, another talk at the end of October for the last day of Culture Days. So if you can sign up for that one, that would be awesome too. That'll be a presentation. Um, it's more in depth. Yes, yeah. I will put the link in the chat. Uh, let me put that in the chat for folks too. If you want to register for that, there you go. There you go. So this piece is permeate. permeate. Yeah. Kind of like if you're letting something steep through something, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah. And making this gesture again. So yeah. what is the what is the left hand? gesture here what is that one so that that's one, kind of going like this to the ground so or, or do you mean the do you mean the one that's doing I, that is this one the, here that's a blessing to the ear. this one is the um this is okay so this isn't really religious actually it's um this artwork by which i believe it was i want to say it was michelangelo i should know this <laughs> um i'll have to check my notes but um made this painting of aristotle and plato Oh yeah, and they were talking about different sources of knowledge. Yeah, and um, Aristotle was what? No, Plato was up. Sorry, and Aristotle was to the to the ground, ground. the source of knowledge from the ground. And I was thinking of rooted in nature and and getting the knowledge from the ground. So yeah. so that's what that is. And you can see if you look closely, there's there's roots coming out of her hands. Oh, we've got a comment. Who is that? Oh, it's just you. Okay, Bruce. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Ignacia. That's very sweet. <laughs> That's great. And then in the background here is a photograph of the ferns and the forest in the back. Yeah. Interesting. It's a, I think it's an interesting layering. We've thank done this you. too. And you can see through some of the tree or bark holes. <laughs> yeah. There's the photo coming through it. I wanted to, I didn't want it to just be pasted on top like a collage. I wanted them to, to mesh together. I think I've I'm not sure what I've done here. This is probably the go back. that took the longest. <laughs> took the longest. Okay, yeah. sorry. I'm going to go back. I'm not sure why it went like that, but this artwork took the longest. It's very detailed drawing. <laughs> yeah, and it's quite I good. love the detail. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's go here. Okay. Page six. 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 There we go. The green one. There's a nice little guy in the bottom. Oh, and this is the one that was on the poster, the Oculus. Yes. So the yeah. eye. Yeah. I and was struggling with the title. <laughs> and then I thought there's that pantheon the dome that has the mm -hmm. Oculus on the top. Mm -hmm. And the so, very top. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought of that. And um, well, it's uh I have to look it up again. There's there's another meaning for Oculus, and that's kind of what 
it's like perception or something like that. And this is a scan of my, my retina, my eye. Um, and again, that was just relating it to the moon, um, mm -hmm. the gaze and like, just again, relating our body to the, to the ecosystem, to the world or universe a bit more. So a lot of um, people that I've talked with have trouble with like imposter syndrome and feeling like they don't belong and stuff like that. So I, um, I was thinking like, I want to show like, yes, we do belong. We're all integrated. Uh, you're supposed to be here. So that's, that's what I'm thinking about sometimes when I'm making these works. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> You're free to make comments too. Yeah. Sharing his journey to make Really? Yeah. I know, but I can pin her. I can pin. Uh... Oh, you can make me a co host. Yeah, I can make yeah. you a co host too. There we go. Co host okay. came. <laughs> uh, can you see Ellie now? Pinned her. Yeah, like you can see her, but it's like you're okay. just looking at the can the audience hear okay? Yeah. Everyone can hear me okay? You betcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll move to the next one. Second. Okay. There we go. Slowly living. <laughs> Just building up the suspense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. The, um, if anyone is having trouble seeing Ellie, you can just click the down arrow. I had done that before, but it won't it won't push you to the top automatically because the mic is on Heidi's computer, not on yours. So it's coming in through Heidi. Oh, so I'm pushed to the bottom. Right, right, right. Okay. But if you scroll, but that's what I mean, you just scroll to the bottom. <laughs> And then just pinch you there for a minute. I'm just down here. <laughs> Make sure why this is still spinning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have too many windows open. That could be it. Yeah, yeah. The YouTube takes up a lot of, and Instagram takes up a lot of data. I will shut a few windows off here. And it could be if they're streaming as well. That yeah. can take up quite a bit. No, I just got my system upgraded to 1.5 gigs, so it should oh, nice. be yeah. Uh, Oh, where's our... stop sharing for one second? Where did everyone go? Okay. <laughs> and then I'll share again. Oh, yeah. And so hopefully it will. Go back in. Not reload it. Started screen sharing. Oh, hold on. It says it right here. Yep, you're good. Am I in now? You're yeah. in. Yep. It's on the artist statement though, so it's on a different thing than you're on for some reason. Actually, my in my email is on. Sorry, folks. Have some water. <laughs> Have a drink. Take a pause. Hydration. Cruise break. around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Water break. <laughs> Another drink. I thought you you two were doing your drinks. <laughs> yeah, I love one. I brought a pocket bread. Ooh. There's, the, yeah, things, and there's also a mascara white and a mascara with it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Apothic sounds good. Maybe you should share your screen. Yeah, I could. Um, I'll stop sharing mine. Oh, there it can. Okay. Cool. Got it, but I don't think we have it. We've got quick, a weird uh, screen. Oh, you got it. Sorry, right, go ahead. Quick question. Quick. My screen shows share content. Should I turn that off? Am I doing something to mess with you guys? Um, no. no, I don't think so. It's <laughs> probably me. Okay, it just shows that it's green like it's anything. lit up. And you're not showing me sharing anything. Oh, I okay. oh, gotcha. Yes, we're on. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Six does. Okay. Good vibrations. Right. Every yeah, time so I see this, good vibrations. <laughs> That's good. That's what I wanted. <laughs> So that's okay. You were <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. So um, this so is why migrations. migrations. Um, <laughs> so gosh, I was so thinking about like when people are, are going through whatever they're going through, and you know, there's been so much of that this past year. You know, I I talk with friends, and everyone's just been through such like 
it's amazing how they got through it. Um, and dealing with that and thinking like, well, I can't go back to the person I was, like I'm healing, but there isn't really any going back. So just a way of seeing that you're changing and that's okay. Um, and it, you're, it's a good migration. You're like, it's a good moving. It's, it's a, you know, um, and yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was, again, that little bit of balancing with humor because there's a lot of heavy stuff that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll just do that even with the, the title. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It's a little, uh, it's a little reminder. It makes you see that. <laughs> yeah, I should reach out to. Is it Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> I'll you send, mentioned, I'll send you a message. mentioned something about this piece too to do with um, mythology and was it yeah. Mythology? What was yeah. That? yeah so I'll talk a bit more about that at the artist talk but okay. I'll just lightly I'll lightly touch on it now because it's there's a lot mm -hmm. of unpacking with that but this I would okay there's this neurologist his name is Oliver Sacks he's really really cool and very smart <laughs> and um he said the need for identity is the need, no, the need for memory is the need for identity. Gosh, it. Need for memory is the need for identity. Because um, I was thinking about, you know, I used to work with archives and I was trying to figure out why I was so obsessed with these awkward female girls in photos. And it was because I am one. And I was trying to, I was, you know, trying to find some rooting and some grounding. I think a lot of people that come from mixed heritage too are like looking for their roots and, yeah trying to figure that out because it gives you stability. Um, and what Sachs talked about was a lot of his patients were just um, a much more dramatic reflection of a lot of minor conditions that everyone experiences. Um, so, so their patients, a lot of them, why they're, they're in so much um, turmoil is because they don't have that grounding. They don't have that identity and history. Um, and I was looking at myths and folklore and you know, I was reading this book, um, I can't remember, it's, it's called A Short History of Myth and I can't remember the name of the author, but I will bring it up at the artist talk. So. Hello? Living their lives according to um, how a myth says you should do something, or you know, folklore stories are often teaching you something, right, for survival, right, right. Um, and and how to live your life. And there's been a sort of loss of that, and a loss of that identity, right. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking at. Oh, I just lost you. Oh, did I? Oh, did my Zoom just die? Did others lose me? Is everyone still here? Yes. Oh. For a moment that you were frozen, but you're back now, so we can hear you. I'm, back now. I'm not sure why it did that. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Um, so loss of myth. Yeah. So I was looking at um because because a lot of myths, people associate them with being this past thing when actually they're supposed to be reevaluated to reflect the current mm -hmm. cultural condition, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to stay relevant. So I took um this folklore character um called the Huldra. H-U-L-D-R-A, and she's a forest um, sort of creature um, who's supposed to, um, well, she's, she's supposed to be really beautiful and everything, and but hideous in the back and has a bark back and everything. And um, if, a, if some man wandered out of the forest and was insane, they would say like this Hudra did this to him. Mm. Um, and there's this, this, there's this bad stereotype of the Hudra because she's actually, she's actually um, basically how she treats you is based on how you treat her. So mm. if, you're, if you're kind to her, she'll guide you out of the forest. If you're right. mean to her, she'll, she'll like curse you or mess you up or yeah, like she'll, she'll do it. She's got all sorts of talents, but <laughs> yeah, so. I was thinking about that and I was like, okay, I want to make this, this character that's not so, you know, overtly one gender or the other, like it's just kind of this creature. And I was thinking about how, how widespread all these um, con conditions like anxiety and depression and dissociation are happening nowadays. So I kind of adapted it um, to be totally covered. So it's a little more, um, what do you call it? Uh, 
uh, can be relatable to more people, right? Um, not just one specific beautiful forest vixen or something like that. Um, and also I was thinking about dissociating and getting comfort from nature and stuff. And so there's this anxious sort of walking creature that's migrating and changing and stuff. And yeah, making making the myth more migrant, making um, and thinking about how people um, are, there's so much anxiety and everything. So there's this sort of appeal of hiding and being anonymous mm -hmm. like this. So, and I really liked the idea of working with the Hudra because there was that, that bit where I said, um, based on your treatment of her, she'd be kind to you. And I was thinking yeah. about that with nature. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to bring nature a bit more into it mm -hmm. because the outcome of nature depends on how, how, how we treat it. Yeah, so yeah, that's a lot of, I, I have a lot of different ideas <laughs> going on in it. So hopefully that made sense. Yeah. Complex piece. Yeah. It's a lot of, I like to pull from a lot of inspirations. There's just, there's so much information out there nowadays. It's, <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, I'm kind of, yeah. <laughs> My screens are too excited. Well, now you're not in it. Okay, we've got two more to do. How's everybody doing? Good. Good, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you are. <laughs> You can get a bit closer. <laughs> I like you. I froze this too. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ah, yes. Yeah. Expected cloud cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like our forecast all the time, actually, <laughs> especially right now. Oh, gosh. I love That's that. True. I didn't even think of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'd say this work is kind of dealing with a lot of the same things with the, mm -hmm. um, with the chance of the skies falling in. Well, it's kind of nice too because it's so lulling and calm and peaceful. It's like, it's okay. It's not, everything's good. Yeah. It's okay. Just reminding to stay calm. <laughs> chance of cloud. So wait yeah. five minutes. Yeah. And, it's, <laughs> and it's pretty. And it's, <laughs> yeah. It's okay. You can just kind of enjoy watching the cloud. Yeah. Whether it's good or bad, you can just kind of enjoy the ride. <laughs> as corny as it sounds. Okay, I'll go to the last one. Oh, off with oh there we anxious. go. <laughs> something anxious. This is the first piece for the art for the augmented reality. Yeah. Which this cool. one just is it's so intriguing. It as changes well. with the, the pandemic, it's really mm -hmm. interesting. It keeps kind of changing. I think with the augmented reality, like you said, it's gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna have this other meaning because you're, you're working on it with um, Pamela. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're saying how they're gonna take this photo and people are gonna be able to project it into their own space, probably homebound. <laughs> Because, you know, there's a fourth wave, unfortunately. Yes, exactly. So and the work is called that. And I was like, oh, I never even thought of that. <laughs> it's very COVID relevant, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Especially since now we spend so much time outdoors during the pandemic. So if we're, if we're lucky, yeah. If we're lucky, yeah. So many more people yeah. did discover nature, which is good. Which is nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, that's also synonymous with discovering the digital world more. Um, and there's this... Um, this writer Susan Sontag, she's mm -hmm. a lot of people Very know famous. her. Yes, yeah. um, and she, song. yeah, and she was talking about how um, she wrote this book. And um, again, I will bring all the names of these books. Uh, I think it's called On Photography, and it's. Um, she says that um, we have to stop this proliferation of imagery. We have to stop it. And then later on in her life, she was like, "Okay, there's no way of stopping it." Um, so what we have to do is use it as a weapon against other images. And I was trying to think of what that meant, and I, I'm not totally sure if I know what it means, um, but I was thinking, well, what we can do with this whole digital proliferation thing is do something like this, this AR thing where you're, you're using it, control is given back to the viewer. So you're using it to get to um, put an artwork into your own space and yeah, you're using 
a digital platform um, for something good versus it just invading your space all the time. You're creating space with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I look at this, I keep thinking of like bubbling. Did you come up with this concept before or during the pandemic? I'm just curious. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2020, right? So yeah, actually I started working on the bubble in November 2019 because I actually made it um out of the spendable steel. Um, but I actually I I sort of had this this weird vision of a person walking around totally isolated in a bubble. <laughs> and then the, the pandemic happened. <laughs> And my friend was like, you need to stop. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, thanks, Ignacio. <laughs> so yeah, that, that kind of freaks me out. Um, but yeah, I had, so I have this other artwork that's called 2020 Vision. Um, and it was also a play on words because you can't see when you're wearing this yeah, bubble, yeah. but it was also because I had a vision of 2020. And I know that sounds crazy, but um, yeah, that's, that's that's but it just popped it just blindly wandered into my head um so i started working on it but then it the meaning really changed with the pandemic and i i hope it'll be timeless i hope it won't just thank be limited you, Adrian. to Ooh. Ooh, thank, thank you thank you so much cheers cheers <laughs> cheers, <everyone. laughs> yeah. cheers cheers congratulations <laughs> thank you that was very good timing <laughs> Let me oh, ask you one question. Sure. See the legs on this? It reminds me of the Hobra. You used to call it the Hobra? The Hudra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hudra. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So it's it's my own legs. It's your own and legs. I, I've but used my legs. It's like you're in yeah. that pose that you did in the previous part. Always walking, moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of slide forward. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. It's an anxious bubble. In there. <laughs> well, I don't feel such anxiety from it, actually. I well, love it. I, want, I don't want people to get anxious. Like, <laughs> like I don't want to upset people. I mean, I suppose yeah. there could be some going like, is she going to walk into that tree sort of thing? Yeah, but, it's more It's more just here to, like, and that's because I want to center things and calm people. Mm -hmm. It's more just like finding calmness within the anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So mental wellness and living with it. So you can be a bubble, but go for a walk if you can. Like, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I did when I was, I was really struggling with the pandemic and isolation. And it was like, I'll just go for a little walk. Like, you know, even if it's just around a yard or something like that, like just, just do that. So you get outside and breathe in the nature. And it, I always felt better after. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are there are there any questions or comments or thoughts or things people want to discuss? Oh good, my mom's here. <laughs> I don't think she's gonna put her microphone on. Well, you've got your links there. There's time for you to explore on your own, but thank you for sharing all those uh, backstories on these yeah. works, Ellie. It's really always interesting to hear from the artists themselves. About thank you. How you came upon these things, or her, you know, sometimes it's accidental, it's a circumstance. It's, I think oftentimes people think that artists, you know, totally plan and structure everything out, or that they just do things randomly, like yeah. and. I always find it's kind of a combination usually. Yeah, yeah. and I, th I think it depends so much on the, the practice of the person. You know, I know some people yeah. that have a very clear concept and then they, they as we discussed, use whatever medium dictates what they're exploring. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's very much opposite um, where an image pops into my head and I, I know there's a reason for it, but I have to figure out why. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like a puzzle piece. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what we were doing with the augmented reality. Yeah. We were puzzling. We were definitely yeah. puzzled <laughs> and puzzling. Uh, what is, what is this? Is this, this? Oh, thank you, Adrian. I really like it. it is on Sweet Pea Galleries. Yeah. You can, you can buy it on Sweet Pea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone wants to reach out to me on social media, um, yeah, follow the Instagram, yeah. follow the Instagram because Ellie, uh, I invited her to take over our Instagram. So I'm just going to go to the Instagram right now and I'll show you what she's doing. Hopefully you can doing see the takeover. screen. She's yeah. doing an artist takeover, which is <laughs> Cool. It's fun. Kind of fun. Yeah. So let's see if I can get my page loaded. I'm getting an actual cable to my studio next week, so I'm excited about that too. Okay. In my studio. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. One second. You have to go to your profile. Yeah, I got to go to my profile. Thing. I need to move over to the profile. Move the, the people's videos over so I can see what I'm doing here. A lot of screens. <laughs> I know. Actually, not a lot of screens for Heidi. <laughs> not a lot of tabs at the top. <laughs> you see, us, we've got two laptops here and, and my iPad. Exciting. Oh, I didn't really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm in a sports bar restaurant or something. <laughs> and I don't even have all Watching my monitors. I put all my monitors up at the house. So what we're going to do on the exchanges uh, Instagram is we're going to make a highlight bubble here for Ellie. Oh. And um, any artist who does a takeover. So we're going to make a, a highlight bubble for her. I love bubbles. I love, <laughs> you do love bubbles. And as uh, as her show is progressing and Culture Days, obviously we're going to have other events and stuff, but she will be posting more and more um, items on here. And also mm -hmm. we are posting items on here as well. Mm -hmm. So so if you're interested in downloading the app and bringing the artworks into your space um, on a walk or at home or whatever you uh, like, um, we're going to update on social media when that's available. Um, we're still preparing it, but it will be available before the end of the show. I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it will be works in progress and we yeah. just keep posting them. So yeah. you can see all kinds of things. And then she'll yeah. post some things that are not in the exhibition, like this piece here mm -hmm. and, uh, and some words and thoughts. And then I just yeah. want to draw attention to um, the other things that are happening for culture days mm -hmm. too. So we've got some guided portrait, contemporary Chinese brush painting, which we did last mm -hmm. year, which was really popular free drop in life drawing and our studio artists are also doing an exhibition in the art passage called Colère. and this was cindy if cindy's still online here this was cindy's um suggestion for the name Colère, which uh relates to the word word culture and um the subtitle here tending to our souls so i love it too it's very poetic cindy uh, that's yes cindy. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I'm still sitting here in the tub. Still in the tub. <laughs> I'm very pruny at this point. I think she's ahead of all of us. You definitely, I think we should go and have a hot tub. Yeah, and there's rain. So rain kicked off the show. Um, her work for distance was absolutely stunning. And um, really, there's some great photos in here as well of, of her work. So... I'm not sure why these ones didn't load, but they are there. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There is the Instagram and um, building up all that content. So yeah, yeah. that's it for us. Yeah. Any questions or thoughts? Please yeah. leave There's... comments on the page, send an email to Ellie or tag her on social media or send us an email. Yeah. I thought, you know what, if some people don't on Instagram, please me an email. Yeah. And if you want even links sent or whatever, I'm available. So okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, a huge thank you to Heidi as well. Um, you did so much getting this together and everything. And it was so crazy because we kept having to re um, program and think about how we're gonna do this and stuff. So yep. thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Heidi. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice <laughs> to see that we can have we can do digital exhibitions and it can look different every time. And um, it's not a formatted, templated thing. It was a collaborative, you know, um, discussion actually about yeah. how it was all going to look. So a lot of a yeah. lot of trying to figure out um, just just the, what the viewer would like. Trying mm -hmm. to trying to guess what. They would like. But thank you very much, Terrence. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Ellie and Heidi. And I look uh, forward to um, Ellie's talk at the end of the month. Very Thank good. You, Cindy. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your bath. Yeah, yeah. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Bye now. Bye -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bubbles too. Okay, we'll sign off, but take care, everybody. And thank you again for joining us. And yeah. Thank you. And good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 I'm going to end it. Bye, Andrea. Thank you. And Louise.